What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at Azure Data Factory in Azure. Azure Data Factory is a super cool tool within Azure because it allows you to create data pipelines and different workflows to extract data and clean data, transform it and put it places. And so it does a lot of different things. It's one of those skills that I started using when I started getting a little bit more advanced in Azure, but I don't think you have to wait till you're really advanced as an analyst or a data scientist or engineer. I think you should start learning it now because it's a really, really great skill to know. So with all that being said, let's jump on my screen and take a look. All right, so let's get started by coming right down here to analytics and under here we have data factories. Let's go ahead and click on it. And let's create a data factory. So let's come in here. We need to give it a name, choose our resource group, and we'll be rocking and rolling. So let's call this the Alex, the analyst, and we'll do ADF just like that. For the region, we're good. And for version, we only have one option. So let's go and review and create this. Now, as we know, this is going to be uh, deploying this. It's going to take just a minute, and then it'll be done, and then we'll get going. And there we go. That literally took maybe 15 seconds. And so uh, just set up the data factory version two and let's go to our resource. And there we go. Now, this should look, uh, you know, fairly straightforward. We just have some of this information up here. We have our launch studio and then down here we have some of the monitoring. So when you're actually running these automated systems, pipelines, everything that we're going to be doing, um, you have some data on it and you can see some of the uh, data on that. Now they do have some quick starts, tutorials, template galleries, and training modules. Go ahead and take those because I've looked at a lot of these and they're really great. Uh, but what we're going to be doing in uh, this lesson, which we're going to cover a lot of stuff is I'm going to help get you set up. I'm going to help show you how to do different things. And there's going to be a lot of stuff that we cover. So I'm going to be moving pretty quick, but let's go ahead and launch our studio. And here we go. So this is the Azure Data Factory. There's a bunch of different things that we can do in here. We can ingest data, we can orchestrate, so create code-free data pipelines, and we can transform data. And we're gonna be looking at a lot of this, but not all of it, so stick with me. The first thing that we are going to do is we're gonna work on an ingestion because being able to pull data in is actually a pretty important thing to know how to do. We're just gonna select run once, and we're gonna select next. Now, uh, there's a lot of different places that you can ingest data from where your source data is stored. But for us, we are gonna select the data that we put in the last lesson. So in our last lesson, we have put some data um, in a SQL database, which this is our server right here, ATA server YT. And we have this table right here. So we're gonna ingest this data. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here, we're gonna type in uh, SQL, which have Azure SQL database should be right there. And we don't have a connection yet, so let's just select our new connection. This is basically like connecting to the Azure Data Studio uh, before. And so this should seem really, really familiar. So we have our ATA server YT, we have our Alex the Analyst DB. And so now we should, uh, for our Azure subscription, we have our subscription. And let me go back, because now it's not remembering. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to select our uh, system assigned manage identity. So our managed identity is this one right here, Alex the Analyst ADF. Now that's going to be really important in just a second because this is by far the most confusing and you know frustrating part of doing this if you've never done this before. So let's just say we want to go ahead and create this. It was successfully created, but we're getting this connection failed. And if we look at this, it says it cannot connect to it because basically it cannot open the server requested by the login. Now, what we need to do is we need to edit this and we need to do something quite important. We need to take this manage identity name and we're going to actually update our database and make sure that this identity name is in there so it recognizes it and can connect to it. So let's go ahead and copy this and let's come right over here. Let me make sure I have that. There you go. Let's do control N in our Azure Data Studio. Now, this right here is the most important thing, but we have to put that in a few different places. So I'm going to write out all the code and then I'll explain it to you and I'll have it to where you can just copy and paste it yourself. You don't have to write it all out. All right. So I went ahead and wrote everything out. What we're doing is we're creating a user and that's going to be our user for Azure Data Factory that we have right here. So we're adding that and then we're altering the role to make them a member so we can get access. Now, if we run just this, let's go ahead and run this. You'll notice that we don't have anything in this database principles and the database role members. This is our uh, sys databases. So we're just checking there isn't uh, that account in there. 
So what we now need to run is this top part. And again, I'll have this as a copy and paste down below. Let's go ahead and run this. And it looks like it worked. And now let's check these two queries again. And there we are. So now we are in both of these uh, sys databases or sys tables that we need to be in. So we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and go back. And we're gonna come right in here. And now that we have all that connected, let's make sure, let's see, let's make sure everything's good in here. Let's go ahead and test this connection. And there we go, you can see that the connection is successful. Now what we can do is cancel out of here, because now this should be working. Now what we need to do next is select what data we actually want in the output. Let's go ahead and select our products. We'll select next. You can preview the data if you want, but we don't need to do any of that right now. Let's go ahead and select next. Now where are we gonna place this data? Because we have data sitting over here in Azure Data Studio, right in here, that we want. And let's say we want to put it in the Azure blob storage. Maybe this is a report or some type of query that we wanna to send to a client. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do. To get it into the Azure blob storage, we need to select our subscription and our account storage name. And we'll go down here to create. Next, we have to choose our folder path. So let's pull up our storage account. We can duplicate this over here and let's come back and let's see if we can get it right here. Here's our storage account. Let's go to Alex the Analyst Storage. Let's go to our storage browser. And we're gonna go to our blob containers. Now we should have uh, one blob container in here. Here we go, ATA container. So we can come back here. We're just gonna select browse. I did all that just to show you where the data was coming from, uh, but that's in our uh, storage account over here. Or is it called account storage? Storage accounts. If we just uh, come in here, and we say, okay, we want to file. That doesn't really work because we're putting data into something. So we can't put it into a different file. We need to select a folder that we're going to place it into. So we're going to select the ATA container. We're going to select OK. For our file name, we'll call this one SQL Database Output. And that should be good. Let's go ahead and select Next. Now, these are file format settings. We need to specify how we actually want this data to sit once we move it into the blob storage. Now, this is a delimited text. You can choose JSON files or C files, Parquet files, uh, whichever files you want. So we're gonna do a comma delimited file, which is, should be a CSV. We shouldn't need to add any compression onto it uh, because this isn't a massive amount of data or multiple files at all. So we should be able to go ahead and select next. Next, we need to specify our task name. Now we're gonna call this one uh, SQL to blob, and we should be good to select next. And this is the whole process. So we have Azure SQL database going to Azure blob storage. Let's go all the way down. We'll select next, and this is uh, creating this. It says our whole deployment is complete. It validated the copy runtime environment, created the data sets, created the pipelines, and ran the pipelines. Go ahead and select finish. If we come over here to our storage, you can see that right here we have our SQL database output. And uh, let's see if we can just click into it real quick. Let's go ahead and download this just to see what it looks like. I'm just going to put this in downloads. We'll go ahead and save that. If we open up this file, uh, just ignore those pictures of me and my wife on the segue. Um, if we open up this file, we can open it up as a, let's just open up a notepad. And you can see here's our data. Now this isn't in a CSV format, um, and that's okay because it's really easy to change it, but it is CSV uh, separated. So it was a text file, it was meant to be, uh, I kind of wanted it to be a CSV, but we can very easily uh, change that if we do dot .csv here. And now we've changed it into a CSV, let's open it up. And there we go. So uh, you can definitely change that. And we may actually look at that at some point in this lesson, but very easy to change it to a CSV file because it is comma separated. Um, so all this looks great. This looks really, really good. I don't need to save this. Let's go ahead and go back. Now let's go back to Azure Data Factory. One thing I want to point out really quickly uh, before we get into some other things is uh, for our recent resources, we have our SQL to blob. You can find that right over here in this author. So when we go over to author, you can find our pipelines and we have some data sets as well for our destination and our source data set. But that's regardless of what we're looking at. In our pipelines, we built our SQL to blob. So if we come over here, this is what it's doing. And we can click on this and we can see uh, kind of what it's doing down here. 
We have our source data. That's where the data is coming from. That's our table. You can also have it write a query. So you can change this to a, write a query from that table if you want to do some advanced stuff. Um, you know, this data is super simple. But if we wanted to just select units in stock where it's greater than 100, right? You can just write the query in here, copy it, and put it right in here. And then you can have a query instead of pulling over the whole table. And so that's actually uh, really, really useful. And so that is all really interesting stuff. Now, within what we're looking at right here, we'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to transform data. Let's go ahead and select this. You can see right up here, we have our SQL to blob. That's our pipeline. And we have a bunch of stuff. And then we have our data flow right down here. Now, what our data flow is, is we're able to take different data sources, different things, transform it, join it, uh, do aggregations, do anything we want to it, and then spit it out wherever we want. If we want to pull all these different files and put into a SQL database, we can do that. If we want to take a bunch of different data and we want to put it into a file, put it into a blob storage, we can do that. Or if we want to take multiple tables from a SQL database and then put it into a file, we can do that. And so it's kind of limitless what you can do within here. I just have to kind of know how it works and, and kind of piece everything together. So let's start building this transformation. Let's come in here and we're going to add a data source. Now within our data source, we can come down here and we need to select a data set. Now these are two data sets that we've already used. Uh, these were in the ones that we did when we created the SQL to blob. But let's say we want to create a new data source. If we select a new data source, you'll notice all the different options for this, right? We have a ton, a ton, a ton of different places and applications that we can pull in. Um, if you just want to scroll down, there's a lot. And so there's a lot of different things. Now we're on a free tier, so um, we may not be able to use some of these, but you know, if your company's paying for it, you should be able to do it. So let's just say we're going to take it from Azure blob storage. We're going to come right here. Ours is uh, a delimited text. Let's go to our link service and go to our storage and we need to select our data. So let's go to ATA container and let's take the CSV file dot CSV. So we just came in here. We're just selecting our data source and you'll see we select it from our blob storage and there's the path to it. Let's go ahead and select OK. And there we go. Now, one thing we will want to do as we're going throughout this process is to turn on data preview. So we have to turn on the debug mode. Debug mode is right up here. So data flow debug, and you can let it live for a certain amount of time. This does cost money. It's very cheap, but uh, it's well worth it because as you're doing all these different things, you're going to want to preview the data and see what data looks like as a final result before you push it somewhere, before you put it into a database or a file. So we're just going to wait for just a second while that, um, while that debug session starts, and then we'll have our data preview available. Now this is taking forever, and I don't want to wait around forever to keep going. Uh, it should work at some point, and maybe we'll see it throughout the process, but uh, we're just going to keep going because uh, if yours is taking as long as mine, we don't need to wait on it it's not vital you don't have to have it um, so let's come down here what we can do is we can add another source if we want to you don't have to but if you have multiple sources you can add that uh, so if you wanted to add a source down here you just add uh, another source we aren't going to be doing that so we can just delete that but let's click this little button right here because they're bringing a little different options than we have been uh, before we have a bunch of things that we can do to this data. So let's just scroll down really quickly. You should notice and you should be able to see a ton of these. And one of the most important is actually this destination, sync destination at the end, and we'll take a look at it in a bit. But we have all of these options to actually change and transform our data. And so if we want to clean the data, if we want to filter the data, if we want to aggregate the data, uh, if we want to pivot the data, there's so many different things that you can do to it. Now really quick, uh, while we're here, I'm just gonna show you the actual data that we're working with. If we open up this file, we have this CSV file. Let's go ahead and open it. And this is the data that is actually in that file that we upload. And there's a lot, there's about 32,000 rows of data we have things like state name county city place type etc as so there's a ton of data in here but let's say we just want to filter this data so let's go back let's go ahead to don't save i just wanted to show you what it looked like let's go ahead and let's say we want to filter our data so we're going to come down here we're going to go to a row modifier which is filter and so what we need to do is come down here and i highly recommend opening up the expression builder 
because what we can do is we can say we want to filter on one of these columns. Now over here in the data flow expression builder, we have our expression up here, then we have all of our elements. So we have things like functions, input schemas, parameters, cache lookups, data flow libraries. 99% of the time, you're gonna be using functions and your input schema. So our input schema is our table and the functions are all the functions that we have in here. So we can do one, there's one called equals. Let's do this one right here. So we can do equals, you have your expression, you can even say over here, here's some examples that you can do. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the input schema and we'll get rid of this. We have something called a state name. So if we come up here, select in there, select state name. So if you do state name, and then in here, let's do Alabama. So what we're saying is, is we're gonna filter where the state name is equal to Alabama. That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna save and finish this, and that should be good to go. Let's see if we have a data preview. This hasn't been working for me at all. I hope it's working for you. Uh, it's just taking it a normally long time. Uh, maybe because they're not prioritizing uh, me as a small account, which is understandable, but um, you know, thanks Azure. So now we have this source, we filtered our data, and now, and you can do so many different things in here. We're just not, this isn't a full um, you know, lesson on how to use this. Now we need something called a sync. Now what the sync is, is how you can actually save and publish it, because you can't publish it without a sync. The sync is how you can specify where you're placing this data. So what we're gonna do is we can place this anywhere we want. We can place this as a new file. We can put this in our SQL uh, database. Now if we come in here, we're gonna have several uh, different options here. But let's go ahead and select a new one. And, and let's say we wanna put it back in the blob storage. So we're cleaning the data up and we're gonna save it as a delimited text file. Let's go ahead and select continue. So now we wanna put it in our blob storage again. We need to select our container. The container is gonna be ATA container. You could set up another container if you want. Now I don't think we wanna select a file name because uh, we're choosing the file path where we're gonna place it. So I think we just need to select okay here. Now there's one last thing that we wanna do before we actually publish all of this. Let's go to settings. And we have some options in here, which is a file name option. Now, when you're doing files in here, you, in fact, you should probably publish this and just try it and see what happens. But oftentimes you're gonna want this as a single file, but that doesn't always happen when you're using Azure. Sometimes it'll make it two, three, four, five, six files, depending on what you're doing. So I like to output this as a single file. And then we get to output as a single file and we can select the name. So we can just put this as, uh, we'll do filtered data uh, and that's it. I'm actually not sure if I need to do .csv right here. Let's just try it as .csv. Let's go ahead and try to publish this. It looks like it says the file name option output to single file requires single partition to be selected in the partition type. So if we come over here, I think it's in optimize for the partition option. You can use current partitioning. We need to select single partitioning. It now says it is fixed. We can close that and let's go ahead and publish all. So what we are going to do is we're going to review this. We have our different data sets um, and then we have our data flow. So our data flow, we're going to go ahead and publish. These are all changes that we've made uh, throughout this process. It's going to deploy those and then it's going to uh, run this data flow one. And then we should see a new data set, uh, which is filtered based off of our source data. We should see that in our storage account. We should be able to come right up here and it looks like uh, all those things are completed. Now I forgot we're actually not gonna see this uh, because it didn't actually run. It just saved as a data flow. We need to come up here and we need to create a new pipeline. So let's come up here, create a new pipeline. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our data flow. We're just gonna drag this over. So this is our data flow and we can name this anything we want. We can say uh, transform you spell that right, uh, transform data. Let's just call it this. And then we need to add a trigger. So we're gonna go ahead and say trigger now, and that should run that data flow that we created. So let's go ahead and trigger now. And actually we need to publish it first. So let's go ahead and publish all. We'll publish this. And that publishing is completed and now we can trigger it.
So now we're going to say, okay, and it's going to start running. And so this is one of the things just to kind of understand about building data flows and pipelines is that the pipeline, you can do a lot of different things in it, but you're mostly chaining together different data flows. When you actually get in the data flow, you're chaining together all the different combinations that you want to do with different data sets and transformations and data cleaning and all these different things. And then you put it into a pipeline and that pipeline, when it runs, which I think it's still running, when it runs, it runs that data flow that you created. And so these data flows can get really complex and you can chain multiple data flows together. You can say, once this data flow is done running, then do this. Once this data flow is done running, do this next data flow. And so there's a lot of different things that you can chain together and it's pretty awesome. So we're just gonna wait on this for just a second. And when it is complete, We'll take a look at the output and there you can see that it succeeded. Let's come over here and take a look. Let's go ahead and refresh this and let's go to our blob container. And there we go. We have our filtered data dot CSV. So you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, so those two things are working great. Let's go back home really quick. So we've worked on ingestion. We worked on data transformation. And lastly, we have this orchestrate. And let's just come in here really quickly and take a look at how this looks. So as I was telling you before, we have these uh, different pipelines that we've created. We've created a few extras that don't do anything. Um, but what we can do is within this, we can orchestrate this by taking multiple different pipelines, multiple workflows, multiple data sets, and orchestrating all of it into an actual full pipeline. Now with that, and we're not actually gonna be uh, doing that right now, but with that, you can see that we have a ton of options right here. And in fact, you can take data from a ton of different places. You can copy data, you can do uh, a Spark job function or even an Azure function, and you can customize so many different things and take data from so many different places, and you can use so many resources within Azure to do just about anything you want. And so, uh, and I don't say that, you know, as in like you can actually do anything, but just look at all these options. There are so many things uh, that you can do. And so I've just given you a brief kind of introduction to ingesting data uh, and transforming data. And then to build these out, you just kind of combine those things together. You say, okay, I want this uh, pipeline right here. And then if that works, then we want to, you know, transfer it over here. Uh, and actually we need to do something like this on success. So you can say, if this works, then on the success of that, we'll do this. And then just for an example, we can say, um, we'll add this down here and we'll say, if it fails, we'll do this one. And so this is just a demonstration of how this looks. This isn't actually what you should do by any means, um, but you can give it some different instructions. You can say, if this successfully works, if this pipeline works, then go do this piece. And then if this works, go do this piece. Oftentimes you're gonna chain these together. And this is the full orchestration of Azure Data Factory that we're not looking at in this lesson. But you can imagine uh, you're taking data from a client. So the client drops data into a specific location. You ingest that data. So you have a data ingestion data flow. Once that data gets in, then maybe you have one for transforming your data. So if the data ingests properly, then you're going to come up here and you're gonna transform the data. Then you'll have another one afterwards. You'll be over here and you'll say once it's transformed and then we're going to send an email to me who is the person who owns that and saying hey this ingestion process worked or this data pipeline worked and so you can get really advanced you can also keep it really simple and in my time as a data analyst i worked with a ton of data engineers and data scientists and database developers who use this all the time so i get in there and i get to mess around with it quite a bit and oftentimes it was mostly keeping it kind of simple you're ingesting data you're transforming the data and you're placing it in somewhere there were some use cases where we did a lot more advanced stuff, but this is the meat and potatoes of it. So play around with this, mess around with it, try to get these different things to work, try to create a full end-to-end -end project. I think that'd be really cool. And maybe I'll do that in a future video. So that is in general, what ADF kind of is. That's the meat and potatoes of Azure Data Factory. And I hope you're able to follow along and really understand that so you can start building on top of that and trying out your own stuff. If you found that helpful, be sure to check out my full Azure and AWS course on analystbuilder.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe below and I will see you in the next video.